Hi, I'm Jeffrey Ventrella. I want to tell you about something I made called clusters. It uses a simple set of rules that play out over thousands of particles, giving rise to a huge variety of space-time patterns that have a lifelike quality. You may have already seen Particle Life, created by Tom Moore. It's based on my original algorithm. Tom made an informative video about his version here. I'll be showing a few examples of particle life later on in the video. Now I'd like to explain this thing. Let's start with the basics. You are a green dot. You love yellow dots. Whenever you see a yellow dot, you move towards it. But yellow dots are afraid of green dots, so the yellow dot runs away from you. You also love blue dots, and blue dots love green dots. So whenever you meet a blue dot, you both gravitate towards each other. What happens if a yellow dot stumbles onto your green-blue love fest? It's afraid of you, but it loves blue dots. Meanwhile, the blue dot has just noticed a red dot which it finds very attractive. Now what happens? It depends on many factors, like the intensity of attraction and repulsion between pairs of dots. Now imagine that there are six kinds of dots of different colors. Each kind of dot has associated attractions or repulsions to all the other kinds of dots, including its own kind. These are force fields, and they cause dots to attract or repel when they get near each other. These forces can be weak or strong. So if there are six kinds of dots, then there are six times six, or 36, unique kinds of force fields, all acting in unison. The effects can resemble a social structure or a predator-prey dynamic. Think of foxes and rabbits. Foxes are genetically predisposed to chase rabbits, and rabbits are genetically predisposed to flee from foxes. Rabbits are also genetically predisposed to chase carrots, although carrots are not genetically predisposed to run away from rabbits. It's a complex dynamical system that borrows some concepts from biology and some concepts from physics. Choose your own favorite metaphor, but in either case, emergence is the key concept here. Something novel that comes into existence when relatively simple rules play out among many interacting parts. In the mid-90s, I made an exploratory micro-world where you can adjust the attractions and repulsions between two particles. I made this when I was at the MIT Media Lab. I revisited this idea while I was developing the 2017 Earth Day animation. It uses a force-based particle system that creates semi-fluid forms that cluster and dissipate. In 2018, Leap Motion co-founder Dave Hulse invited me to collaborate with his development team to implement the cluster's particle algorithm in virtual reality. We created a very cool demo where one can manipulate particles with their hands using Leap Motion technology. Around that time, Tom developed Particle Life which popularized this technique for using particles to create lifelike effects. The algorithm also inspired Batiste Crespi to make something called atomic clusters, using a more fundamental level design based on imaginary subatomic particles. Several other clever variations have been made since. Hiroki Sayama's swarm chemistry is one of the earliest examples of artificial life research using self-propelled particles, similar to Craig Reynolds' Boyd's. I met Hiroki at the 10th Artificial Life Conference in 2006, where I presented research involving a particle swarm. Here's another thing to check out, particle linea. These links will be made available on the cluster's website. Molecular engineers know very well that there are astronomically many ways that atoms can be arranged to form molecules, including all the amazing biomolecules that comprise the machinery of life on Earth. Consider interatomic forces. When a pair of atoms are close to each other, they attract, but if they get too close, they repel, and so they each settle into a comfortable distance. 
This graph plots a force field as a function of the distance between a pair of atoms. Pairs of atoms naturally settle to the equilibrium distance. Let's dive a little deeper into the ways that particles can experience forces based on their distances. Let's start by initializing a bunch of particles, give them each a random jolt, and then watch them shift until they come to rest. This is ground zero. Take two of these particles and draw a line between them. Make them want to stay a certain distance from each other. This is your basic spring physics. You could say that one half of a spring force is the half that pushes particles apart if they get too close. Well, this half is synonymous with a soft collision between two particles. Packing a lot of dots into a tank and giving them soft collisions creates a fluid-like effect. By the way, in all these examples, a bit of friction is added to keep things from getting out of hand. According to Newton's third law of motion, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The Cluster's particle algorithm allows Newton's law to be broken. This creates constant motion, as if some continual energy source were at play. Here's where the real fun begins. When two particles are connected by a spring, they both get forced in opposite directions with the same magnitude. Let's pretend that these particles don't want to participate in this silly rule, and they choose their own forces, which may be attractive or repulsive. Essentially, pairs of particles can disagree on their spring's length. So, with this weird asymmetrical physics, we're really not talking about normal physics anymore. Now we're pretending that these are self-propelled entities. And that's where the biological metaphor comes in. The energy sources are inside of the dots. They are well-fed and socially motivated. The details of locomotion are abstracted away. Imagine that each particle is surrounded by a circle, a view horizon. A particle can't see anything outside of its view horizon. If two particles get close enough, one or both of them will enter into the circle of the other. That would trigger a force response as determined by their particular force parameters. Tom Moore's implementation uses a constant circle radius for all particles. But the original cluster's algorithm allows for different view horizons. Imagine if one particle had a larger view horizon than the other particle. If these particles were gradually moving towards each other, one particle would notice the other particle sooner. Here's a graph showing a typical force field used in the cluster's particle algorithm. Instead of having curvy lines, these force fields have sharp thresholds. Here's an example of Tom's version of the force field being tweaked in real time, taken from his video. Only one parameter is used in his version for elegance and to make it easier to explain and to implement. But I like imagining force fields being arbitrary. As long as we're not obeying Newton's law, let's have some fun with it. Here's a force field where the force is constant along a stretch of distance. When a force field has this sharp cutoff feature, particles can exhibit sudden changes in velocity, which can have an effect on overall dynamics. Given these various parameters, many kinds of force fields can be specified. Here are a few examples. You could think of the cluster's particle algorithm as a collection of generalized force fields. And that brings us to the subject of species and ecosystems. There are three basic components in this universe, particles, species, and ecosystems. A particle is a point mass with a position, a velocity, and a color. The size of the dot is purely visual. The color of a particle represents its species. Each species interacts with each other kind of species in a specific way. This is determined by its genetics, that is, the parameters of the force fields. All particles of a common species have the same gene values. An ecosystem is a collection of particles of one or more species. We can think of an ecosystem 
as a complex system in which all the genes of all the species have been designed or evolved using a genetic algorithm. To create complex dynamics of one kind or another, the important concept here is that the genes of all the species in the ecosystem determine its overall character. Now I want to explain one of the more subtle aspects of the cluster's universe. Species can have a lag in their responses when interacting with other species. This is related to the concept of hysteresis. Time delays are normal in biological processes and necessary for many engineered control systems. In the cluster's universe, these intertwingled delays and tangled oscillations can cause emergent rhythms and cycles having longer periods, giving rise to new levels of complexity. They can even become an integral part of the way a big cluster blob moves around. The algorithm achieves this extra level of complexity by simply having particles of different species delay their force responses by differing amounts. This causes dynamical patterns that are nearly impossible to predict from just knowing the delay values. This is the nature of emergence. Sometimes it's hard for me to believe that all of the complexity that we see in our life can arise from particle physics, even humans, thoughts and emotions. But for me, seeing how particle life can already create these lifelike structures in a much simpler universe makes all of that a bit more believable. How can such simple rules about the forces between particles create such complex behaviors? It's especially complex when there are many thousands of particles involved. And this is related to the more is different concept. Studying emergence is, in my opinion, a worthwhile preoccupation. For instance, we can talk about individual dots as little characters falling in and out of love. But what's amazing is that when certain clusters of different kinds of dots come together, they can act like a superorganism or a multicellular creature that can shapeshift. These are ambiguous entities. Fans of plasmodial slime molds know what I'm talking about. You may be reminded of Conway's Game of Life, in which complexity emerges from a simple set of rules being applied repeatedly over several identical elements called cellular automata. A cell changes color according to the colors of its immediate neighborhood. The cluster's particle algorithm is similar in that the rules of interaction apply only to nearby particles. This idea of an automaton responding only to its immediate neighbors is called locality, and it's an important concept in emergent systems. For a bit of background, here's part of an interview with me and Tom Barbalay. And for you coders out there, the original version of Clusters is now open source. Also, here are links to the code for Particle Life, Atomic Clusters, and other related projects. This information will be made available on the Clusters website. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this video.